Comic Zone is one of the most stylish Sega Genesis games ever made. I'm 25 years old and I've played a bunch of video games in my life. So many that sometimes I randomly remember playing something as a kid that makes me go, hey, wanna play that again? This time it was with Comic Zone. I never played the full game before, but way back then, my dad got a demo disc that had a lot of Sega games. He got it because there was a Sonic game included and I was a big Sonic fan as a kid, but it was a weird educational game that was not that great. I'm Sonic! So what really got my attention on that disc was this beaten up game that took place inside of a comic book, and the graphics and UI all had this really unique look. That is all I remember from this one though, playing a demo on an old PC more than 18 years ago, in a time that I looked like this. But a game set inside comic book panels is an amazing concept. Sega thought they cooked so hard that they straight up patented the idea. Good thing for us is that old Sega Genesis games are easily accessible to play via the Sega Genesis Classics hub. It even has a customizable 90s room, some filters and there's a VR mode so you can pretend to play on a CRT TV, just like the old times. So why don't we check this one out together, shall we? Is Comic Zone a good game or is it a waste of a really cool concept? Let's find out! Released in 1995 for the Sega Genesis, Comic Zone takes place in New York, where we play as Sketch Turner, a starving artist and comic book writer. The game's first concept was a demo video made in the Amiga PCs titled Joe Pencil Trapped in the Comic Zone, and as you can see, Peter Morovic, the creator of the game, is great at naming characters. Both are names that you can expect to be murderers in an Ace Attorney case where the victim was killed by a drawing pen. So Sketch is working on his comic book. It's set on a post-apocalyptic city that is dealing with an alien invasion. And the name of the comic is... Comic Zone. Yo, it's the name of the game! Suddenly a lightning bolt hits one of the pages and Mortis, the villain of the comic, escapes. He's still only a drawing though, and in order to become real and take over the real world, he has to kill his own creator. He traps Sketch inside Comic Zone and takes control of the story. Inside the comic, Sketch meets General Lisa, who sees him as the Chosen One, and sends him on a mission to defeat Mortis and the aliens. It's a pretty serviceable plot for a beating up game. Basically, you're a superhero now, so just go beat everyone up and get out of the comic. Okay, first of all, this game looks so good! The visual style is top-notch, everything looks and sounds amazing, and it really sells the idea that you're inside of a comic book. Like, there's different panels that you travel through, there's speech bubbles for dialogue, there's onomatopoeia pop-ups, paper effects, and the coolest detail is the hand of Mordus drawing the enemies. Overall, really nice stuff to see. But how does it play? It's a pretty typical 2D beaten up game. You walk around with the D-pad, the A button attacks, the B button jumps, the C button blocks, and the X, Y, and Z buttons use the items. The levels are structured into a number of comic panels that we have to beat everyone up or solve a simple puzzle to proceed to the next one until we reach the end of the page. Well done, Turner. In total, there are three episodes with two pages each. The combat is fun, Sketch has a lot of attacks to work with. Enemy variety is also okay with each enemy type requiring a different strategy to beat. They also block and counter your attacks so you can just button mash your way out of fights. Last thing about the level structure and something that is actually pretty cool is that there are some branching paths. They eventually lead to the same place in the end, but it's a nice touch that adds to the replayability. Especially because we will have to play this level several times until we beat the game. So we're getting at the end of the first page and... Uh... Oh wow, we're back at the main menu after dying one time. It's gonna be a pretty fun game, right? So now is a good time to say that this game is hard. You're going to die a lot and when you die, you have to start all over again. 
You can use save states to make your life easier, but since I hate myself, I'm not using those. But the thing is, there's a fine line between being challenging and being frustrating, and Comic Zone many times crosses the line by a lot. There's a lot of unfair things and artificial difficulty in this game, which causes many people to give up before even finishing the second episode. What you're seeing on your screen right now is one of the biggest offenses that I've ever seen in a video game. There are some breakable objects in Comic Zone, but to break them, you lose health. You lose health to break objects, and many of those objects are required to be broken to proceed the level. For example, I need to get past this gate, so I have to punch it and lose all of my health doing so. So you have an already hard game with limited health regen options and even more limited checkpoints like you only gain an extra life when you defeat a boss and you have to deal with a bunch of roadblocks that takes half of our character's health to get past? Like, why would you do this to me, game? Why do you hate me? This is footage of me repeatedly punching a wall, watching my health bar getting lower and lower, while my desire is to start repeatedly punch a wall and see my health get lower in real life. Okay. To be fair, you can get past these broke blocks without losing health by using items. You find them across the pages of Comic Zone and have 3 slots to work with them. They are Rokil, aka the best part of this game. This is Cat's pet rat and he's the GOAT. This little guy can flip switches, he aids you in combat, and most importantly, he can find you hidden items across the pages. He takes an inventory space, but you pretty much want to always keep him with you. I got emotionally attached to this rat, man. And you have to be careful because he takes damage and can actually die. Okay, buddy, go pull the switch. Thank you. Wait. Wait, he can get back? He can get back? What the f- No! But don't worry. Thankfully, he respawns later in the stages. The only problem with Roadkill is that there are no indications on where a hidden item can be and since items are really important and kinda rare, you end up just randomly throwing the rat everywhere in hope to find something. Continuing with the items, we got Ice Tea that restores a bit of health, Superhero that turns Cat into a superhero momentarily, dealing a lot of damage to every enemy on the screen, Knife, a long range weapon that you can throw to attack or to turn switches at a distance. Grenade that can be thrown in an arc and explodes when it hits an enemy or surface. Bomb, an explosive that blasts everything nearby and can be used to blow up those walls and roadblocks. And surprise, a mystery item that you can get any of the power-ups or it can blow you up and my god that's a lot of damage. You lose all of the items when you die or finish an episode, so make sure to put them to good use. And be careful not to throw the explosive ones on yourself. But here's the problem with the items and Comic Zone in general. The game is designed with an ideal way of progressing through the panels. Each panel expects you to do things in an optimal way, and most of the time, it requires certain items. I can lose all of my health by punching this gate, but what the game wants me to do is to throw the rat in this specific corner to find a bomb and then use it to blow up the gate. It's these things that are kind of impossible to figure it out in a first playthrough that frustrates me a lot, and unfortunately, there's too much of this in Comic Zone. Like this panel already starts stupid with an off-screen enemy that tries to throw you into the mines and oh my god. But okay, I see mines and thankfully I have a bomb. Nita, what if you don't have one? Well, then just punch it and tank the damage, that's how this works. But yeah, I have to throw the bomb at the mines to clear the path, right? It's pretty simple. Well, wrong. Because I threw it and guess what? At the end of the panel, right at the exit, there are two mines that didn't blow up. But wait, I found this superhero in this panel, maybe it works... And of course it doesn't. So I ended up having to punch them and tanking the damage anyway. 
You see, what the game wanted me to do was to jump past the first row of mines and then throw the bomb only at the exit. You can see the issues here, right? Firstly, it disencourages you from using the items because you ended up being conditioned to keep them until you find the right place and the right time that the game wants you to use them. And secondly, in most cases, you are left with the impression of how was I supposed to know that? It feels cheap. There isn't a problem with having an ideal way of progressing. The problem is that the other options, if you don't know the way, are way too punishing. So I tried to brute force my way into beating this game with no success. I felt like I was Sisyphus man, eternally pushing a boulder up the hill with no progress whatsoever. It took me too long to realize that while Comic Zone was released on consoles, it was designed like an arcade game. I finally had this realization after the game threw one enemy after another leaving me with almost zero health and when I proceeded to the next panel, it showed me an ice tea hidden in the door that I couldn't get back to. And I could almost see this game laughing at my face and saying Whoa, your health is pretty low, huh? That means you're probably going to die pretty soon and return all the way back to level 1. So remember, there's a nice tea hidden in that door next time you get here. See you soon! Back in the ancient times of the arcades, you would spend your quarters for credits to play. So in order to make people spend more money, arcade games were designed to be really hard because the more you die, the more money you have to spend to keep playing. Comic Zone is also an old game, and with both hardware and budget limitations of the time, it makes the limited content that he has a lot more difficult in order to stretch out the playtime. That's why instead of having checkpoints, it makes you play the whole thing from the start and have a lot of cheap ways to kill you, like bottomless pits and a bunch of stuff that you can only learn by trial and error. Of course, these aren't problems exclusive to Comic Zone, some of them were kind of common in games at that time. If you know what you're doing and learn the ideal way to play, you can beat this game in less than 40 minutes. However, the learning process of doing so can take hours of your time. And it took mine. 4 hours and 12 minutes, to be more exact. Which means that with only 40 minutes of content, the game manages to stretch more than 600% of playtime. Which is insane. I had to stop trying to play like a normal person and started playing like a freaking nerd. I started grinding this game, I took notes. I drew roadkill in every single corner of the panels to learn all of the item locations and where to use them. It felt like I was playing a roguelike, but instead of my character getting stronger, it was me and my brain that was developing, and it felt great. I end up with a map. Here it is. This is the way that Comic Zone wants you to play, with all of the enemy locations, best routes to take, and where to find and use each item. And with all of this in hand, I still die in stupid ways because I suck. And with all of this in hand, I managed to get to the final boss panel with almost no health and I died again and I'm back at the store. <laughs> and with all of this in hand, I finally managed to get to the final boss and beat the game. So spoilers for the ending, if you care, which I think you don't, but if you care, then skip to this part of the video. Mortis jumps back into the comic and we have our final boss battle. We beat him and the game ends in a really sad note because Alisa dies, the comic is destroyed and Sketch is here cosplaying that picture from Spider-Man 3. And after everything that I done, the game is straight up telling me that I shouldn't celebrate because I got a bad ending. And I have to relive the adventure to get a better one. Because Comic Zone really enjoys making you start the game all over again till the very end. Okay, this time we beat Mortis in time and we save Elisa. And now Sketch is leaving every single artist's dream because his OC is now real and his comic is a success. 
the end. Okay, to be fair, having two different endings is pretty cool, and it made the boss battle really anxiety inducing because you have to beat it on a time limit. But I am so tired of this game, bro, that I'm just glad that it's over. Quick final thoughts on Comic Zone to wrap it up. Is Comic Zone a good game, or is it a waste of a really cool concept? I don't think it's a game that I would recommend to people, mostly because of the stupid hard difficulty. But I did have fun playing it, so I don't think it's a waste of the concept. However, if this was a normal beaten up game without the whole comic book look aspect, it would definitely be a game completely forgotten at this point. Should you play Comic Zone? If you enjoy playing frustrating games and or hate yourself, like me, then yeah, you should give it a go. But if you like the idea of a playable comic book game, but want something that is not so hard and actually fun to play, I also got you. While searching for other games with a comic book style, I discovered 13. 13 is an FPS based on a Belgian graphic novel of the same name, and it's a really cool game that has an awesome cell shaded comic book look, both in-game and in cutscenes. Just make sure to grab the classic 2003 version and not the newest remake. That's it for this video, thanks a lot for watching. If you know more games with a cool and different art style like this, then let me know in the comments. See you later, bye bye